What is up YouTube? We're Underleveled, my name is Taka, and today I'm going to be going over what I think is the hardest and most time consuming armor piece to get in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, as well as if it's worth grinding for. So, let's get right into it. Alright, so, just a warning, this video might contain some endgame spoilers, because this armor piece can only be obtained after the main story. Now, I'm not going to mention any of the story in this video, but, you know, just in case, right? So, just like our other video on the Feather of Mastery armor piece, Sunbreak has two new armors that are given as rewards for beating the arena quest. And with the monsters arguably being more difficult than the base Monster Hunter Rise monsters, I feel like these two armor pieces are by far the hardest and most time consuming to obtain. So let's take a look at how you get them and what armor skills they give you. First, in order to unlock all of the 6 new arena quests in Sunbreak, you will need to first beat the Furious Rajang urgent quest. Once you do that, then you should have all of the arena quests unlocked. Now the first armor piece you can get is the Blessed Feather. Now, I believe you can get this if you beat each arena quest with at least one weapon. Now, regrettably, I can't confirm this as I was clearing all the arenas with every single weapon as I made my way through the story. But you can see that once I've cleared the final arena quest with just one weapon, I was already rewarded with the Blessed Feather. As of this early into the release, there isn't any info on this armor piece, so there might be a possibility that there are other requirements to unlock this specific armor piece, such as possibly getting a certain rank or whatnot. But anyways, here's what the Blessed Feather will give you. So it will give you a single 2 level deco slot and full 3 levels of good luck. Now, good luck isn't a bad skill at all. It's great for cutting down the time it takes to farm up materials, but it is debatable whether it's more efficient to just make a DPS build and clear quests faster. But this is actually also kind of nice because Fate Jewels, which give you the good luck skills, are very expensive to slot in, and there really aren't many armor pieces that offer the good luck skill. So, if you are after the good luck skill, then this could be a great option for you. So, I would say that this armor piece is worth grinding for. Now the next one, I'll let you decide because it is far more difficult and time consuming to obtain. That would be the Soaring Feather. Yes, just like the Feather of Mastery from base Monster Hunter Rise, you can only get this armor piece by beating every single arena with every single weapon. Now for this one, I can confirm that there are no rank requirements, so you don't need to get an S or A rank. You can clear this with a B rank and still get it, but you do need to clear it with every single weapon. Now, this was difficult, like, it was really difficult, especially in the later arenas. So, was it worth it? Well, here's what the Soaring Feather will give you. First, it comes with one level 4 deco slot, which is really nice. It also has the full 3 levels of Wirebug Whisperer and Wall Runner Boost. Now, it kinda seems lackluster for the effort that you put into getting this, but it does have possibilities. With so many new switch skills, wire bugs are more important than ever, and getting them back faster is always a good thing. On the other side of the coin, is it worth taking up an armor equipment slot? There are lots of other armor pieces with that skill, as well as talismans and decos. And wall runner boost is a really cheap deco that you can easily slot in. Both of these skills are really good to have, but you could get these skills other ways and have a little more flexibility in your overall build. So I feel like the Soaring Feather is more like a trophy for your hard work. But for me personally, I'm a completionist and I like a good challenge. So even if this gave me no skills at all, just knowing it's out there to obtain, I would still grind for it. Which I did. And it was painful. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of these armor pieces and how you plan to use them in builds, or if you're even going to try for them. Just remember to be kind and don't judge others on how they enjoy playing their game. But if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button, as well as subscribe and turning on the bell for notifications for more Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak content. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.